गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीबॉडी दिस इज संगीता सक्सेना एडिटर एविएशन एंड डिफेंस यूनिवर्स गेटिंग यू लाइव फ्रॉम एरो एम आर ओ ट्वेंटी इन इंडिया एंड वी हैव विद अस समवन वी हैव बीन वांटिंग टू इंटरव्यू फॉर सम टाइम बट हैव नॉट बीन एबल टू कैच वी हैव विद अस हियर मिस्टर शरद अग्रवाल सीईओ ए आई ई एस एल एंड ही इज ओनली गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन एवरीथिंग अबाउट ए आई ई एस एल टू अस सर इट्स वंडरफुल टू हैव यू हियर we've had a tradition of interviewing the ceos and uh, this is a post covid break and you know we had those breaks in between where we couldn't meet and uh, sir how do you see the mro industry now after this post covid okay so first of all thank you namaskar everyone and thanks a lot uh, aiesl is the largest mro in india in a way we started as at engineering department of air india way back in 1953 e air india registered aiesl as an independent unit in 2004 but to, uh, aiesl was formally operationalized only in 2015 now 2015 to 2020 some significant gains were made as an independent unit but then the covid struck us 2000 at least two years were lost to the covid it was a huge challenge for us to get our people to the airport and at least keep on doing their minimum maintenance on each of the aircraft so as to keep them if not airworthy at least ensure the continuing airworthiness compliance on the aircraft formally all the flights were resumed in this summer schedule in 2022 when the new challenges started coming the even before that the period uh, period about 6 months prior to this at least there was a pressure to have all the aircraft service safe which created a, a business opportunity for us and we tried our best to do to ensure that as many feasible aircraft are made serviceable for this summer schedule now going a step further then the main challenges are coming because of the change aerospace in india air india has been sold off has been disinvested and is now under private hold the requirement definitely get multi fold because Air India is now looking for performance guarantees from all its partners. So far, we have been able to meet the challenges, but then yes, there are challenges, and there are more and more challenges which do come. I do look forward that AISN as an MRO will continue growing, will be the flag bearer of MRO industry in India, and not only that, the MRO industry in India will also continue growing. so one thing which i wanted to ask you was that uh, we talk of line maintenance yes but what happens when it comes to engine mros and uh, what happens to components right. right so now yes that's a huge again a huge gray area for the simple reason line maintenance has to be done at the airport where the aircraft is standing where the aircraft is transiting and there's absolutely no way where airlines can deviate from that so by default line maintenance business will come to the airport where the airlines is operating issue comes when it comes to base maintenance because an airline has an option and airlines can choose any of an its online station for the base maintenance services for example in good old days also AISL was serving Air India at Delhi, Mumbai, Calcutta, Hyderabad, and Trivandrum. A new station that is Nagpur came up in 2016 after the AISL came into being, and I can say now that at least we it's not just triple seven, but the Nagpur is also doing base maintenance for three twenty. now you now coming to the engine and components yes an airline has an option airline because 
the engine has to or component has to be removed from the aircraft and go to a bunker. Engine and component can be removed at any of the locations. So airlines anyway has to ship it to a shop. Now when it comes to that, if the options within airlines go multifold. Airlines can, airlines will just look for a tag and commercial terms. And wherever airlines gets competitive terms, commercial terms and a competitive tag, airlines will take the engine or component there. Now this is one of the huge challenges. Second thing, airlines is going for pooling arrangement with international companies for its engines and components. That is, an Indian engine or component can go abroad and an engine or component from a foreign country can come to India. Now what does that mean? That means that this engine and component have to be certified at a standard which is internationally recognized. And the only internationally recognized approvals are YAZA and FAA. When I took over as the CEO AISL, I just I took on that now the COVID is over, enough is enough. And we have to get ourselves whatever capacity we have, we have to get uh, YAZA and FA approval for this. I can say that in the last six months we have had a visit from YAZA which was long pending for the last two years. We have been audited and we are looking for the close-up reports. The FA audits are planned in the coming weeks and hopefully we should get some uh, capability under FA rating as well. So with this, now we are gearing up in India to serve the customers for our engine and component business. But then yes, it's a long way to go before we can say that engine components or engines will not go abroad. There's a long, long way to go. Right, sir. I think what you're seeing is absolutely correct. Also, sir, when we, uh, as in when, go towards the end of this conversation, there's something which I wanted to understand. Uh, you, as traditionally, your company has been in the civil market and it's commercial aviation, which is your forte. Have you ever got this thought that we also have the same aircraft as a military transporter? And uh, would you ever think that you could also get into this field? Absolutely, you are absolutely right. First of all, well, aircraft manufacturer, he makes a commercial aircraft. He makes a transport aircraft. It's the market which just dumps it as commercial, uh, commercial or a different aircraft. Mm. Having said that, there are a lot of mm. so-called civil aircraft also flying in the different side. Mm. AISL is trying is concentrating on at least some of these aircraft, some of the so-called civil aircraft, but which are flying with in the defense environment. And we are aggressively marketing ourselves in that we have already gained one contract, one major contract that is, we have got a small contract for engine and landing gear overall and we are also looking forward to another big contract for aircraft maintenance. So hopefully all these things will fall in place. Right now I can't disclose more than that. Perfect. As in when it That's wonderful, sir. Absolutely. I, I, it will be news for everybody in the aviation sector that, uh, you know, for an organization which was so entrenched into commercial MRO, yeah. suddenly has forayed into the military MRO front. So all the best. We wish you, you know, we really hope that by the time, you know, it's another two years and things have stabilized in the market also post-COVID in the aviation sector. And uh, we really wish you all the best for a very thank happy you. foray into military MROs. Thank you, thank you. And let me just give you one more data. Right. There's just about 1,000 aircraft in civil yes. in India. 
and there are more than 2000 in defense <laughs> that's a so wonderful that's a thing idea. to yeah. say yeah. so that's a bigger market that's, that's a market. bigger market for you thank you very much sir it was wonderful to have you on our chat room hope to whenever we meet again we really hope that we'll have much much more news from you on the defense mro thank front you. thank you very much sir thank you ji